as we're working with derivatives, there are a few properties that we will need to know. So at the end of this lesson, you'll be able to use the properties of derivatives to find where a function does and does not have a derivative. Okay, first property. A graph with a sharp turn does not have a derivative at that point. Let me give you an example. Let's say this is my graph. It's an absolute value graph. Okay, and we'll put We'll put an x and y axis on this thing, I guess. Here we go. All right. So a graph with a sharp turn does not have a derivative at that point. You'll notice at the point zero zero, if I tried, oops, if I tried to draw the tangent line, notice I've got a tangent line that would go here. I've got a tangent line that would go here. I've got a tangent line that would go here. There are all sorts of spots where I could actually draw the the tangent line because it would touch at that one spot and it wouldn't touch the graph again. So since there really is no one place where there's going to be a tangent line, a graph with a sharp turn will not have a derivative. So I would say on this one there is no derivative at x equals 0. We can find the derivative at different places on the graph, but we specifically can, cannot find the derivative at x equals 0. Um, let me give you another example. If I had something that looked, it was just a nice smooth curve, but then it did something like that. At this spot right here, there would not be a derivative. So I just put no derivative. And again, it's because there is a sharp turn there, so the derivative would just not exist. All right, next property. If f of x has a derivative at x equals c, then f is continuous at x equals c. So this is just saying if I have a derivative, I found an answer, then it must be true that f is continuous. So if I get an example, let's see. And then going backwards, I guess, basically, let's just do one. Okay, if I get here and I find the derivative, I can find the slope of the tangent line right there. That means that function is continuous at that point, right? The backwards way of this, the actual count, um, contrapositive, which you learned way back in geometry, is also true. And this is probably the most one that we use if the contrapositive is, is if f is not continuous at x equals c, and remember c is just x equals 3, x equals 6, whatever, then f does not have a derivative. And that's what we'll use more often. So if I have a function that looks like this, and let's say, let's give it an asymptote, how about? So I have something that looks like this, and I have something that looks like that. If I have this specific graph, if f is not continuous at a certain spot, then f does not have a derivative. So if I was asking where does this have a derivative or not have a derivative, I would say that there is no derivative at x equals 2. And the reason that there's no derivative at x equals 2 is because it's not continuous there. And if it's not continuous, it can't have a derivative. One thing that we will, I will point out, because you'll probably start hearing me say this word, is the word differentiable. Differentiable just means you can take the derivative. So I can take the derivative. Okay, so if I asked you instead of where can you not take the derivative, I might ask where is the function differentiable? And so you tell me all the places where I can take the derivative. So if I said where is this differentiable, I would have to say it's differentiable from negative infinity until I get to 2, and then it's differentiable from 2 to infinity, but it's not differentiable at 2. So very similar to the domain of a function is where we would find where it's differentiable. So hopefully now you can use the properties of derivatives to tell where a function does have a derivative and where it does not.